welcome folks, happy Friday. Welcome to Kubernetes release team, the whys and hows, ways and means. So we are, my name is Ray Lahano. I am uh, the uh, co-chair for Kubernetes SIG Docs. I've also been a member of seven release teams, highlighting as the um, 123 release lead, the 125 Emeritus Advisor, I'm also a uh, sub-project lead for SIG Security <clears throat> for the external security audits, which was just published on Wednesday. Uh, so please take a look at that. And Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Priyanka Sagu. Um, I am currently the technical lead for SIG Contribux, and I have been part of the release team for five cycles now, uh, starting <laughs> with 123 as Enhancement Shadow, um, leading enhancements in 125 and uh, release lead shadow in 126 and 27. Yeah, yeah so 123 has a special uh, meaning to both of us. It's the release that I led, and it's also the release that Priyanka started with the release team. So the Kubernetes release team is part of SIG release. Uh, there is a, release, a new release team for each release cycle, so there's three uh, release cycles a year, and we're from all over the world. Uh, we, as a whole team, we are responsible for the day-to-day -day, uh, work required to successfully release uh, Kubernetes, and the release team has a shadow program. The shadow program is a mentorship uh, for folks um, without any contributor experience, a lot, there are some folks as well that are uh, veterans in, uh, of Kubernetes con uh, contributions. Uh, we also have folks who are also SIG leads as well and SIG uh, technical leads as well who are, who are also joined as shadows in, um, in the Kubernetes release team. Uh, so this, the shadow program uh, is, is, is pretty popular. It's, it's, a, it's, uh, it's a structured program. Uh, to, for folks to learn about the Kubernetes release process, uh, <clears throat> to actively do work uh, to help release uh, Kubernetes as well. Uh, and, you, and folks learn how Kubernetes is released from generating release notes, uh, curating the documentation for new or, uh, or graduating features. Uh, they help to gather enhancements, so with help gathering enhancements, they learn about the enhancements, they're reading the, 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 the enhancements proposals, um, and, and they also make sure that like all the code PRs are merged before code freeze, uh, and lots more. So there's lots of responsibilities that the release team is responsible for to help successfully lead a uh, release one of the, the largest open source Golang project. And also one of the, the points of the Kubernetes release team is, as well is to, that it grows the community. So our shadow is a mentorship program, like I mentioned before, and other SIGs have also incorporated uh, a shadow program as well. Uh, so it helps bring new folks uh, as contributors to the community. Uh, and also it kind of has that structured contributor ladder uh, in the shadow program. So folks who, and we'll talk about the different roles in the release team in a few slides here. So the shadow program helps folks uh, <clears throat> learn about the specific task that's part of releasing Kubernetes. Uh, and from there, uh, they can become uh, role leads. So uh, for, we have role leads for each role. Then we have an, also a release lead as well. And even the release lead will have lead shadows who, are, who have been experienced uh, release team members. So the release team is not only just uh, brings folks to release Kubernetes, but also helps grow the whole community as well. <clears throat> so like I mentioned before, uh, the release cycle, we, have, uh, we do three releases a year. Uh, they're about a 15 week cycle. The last um, release cycle of the year tends to be difficult with holidays. We also take a break for KubeCon NA as well uh, for the last re release cycle. So it might be from 15 weeks, it might be 16 weeks, but it might be just 15 working weeks or it might be a 15 week cycle, but it might be 14 working weeks. Uh, we do like to take a two week break between cycles as well where we do retrospectives of the previous cycle. So we learn, we talk about what we could do, what, what went well, what we could do better, what we can, what can, or what can we improve. And we're always iterating on the release team uh, cycle or process uh, and the release process as well. 
uh, every single uh, release cycle. And this two week period also gives us time, uh, and we'll talk about this uh, towards the end of the talk, uh, to open the application for new shadows for the new release cycle. Um, so there are some delays as well that might impact the release cycle. I think for 124, there was a three week delay because of a, a Neo Golang versioning um, as well. And 119 was one, well, I think 119 was severely delayed as well. Uh, Cause that's when COVID happened. Uh, so uh, release dates uh, are aspirational, and that's what we like to say. <laughs> but we definitely do have release date targets um, uh, for it. So I'll just highlight some of the um, some of the release cycle. So well, it's like I said, it's usually a 15 week process, but we actually start before the release cycle, where we assemble the team about uh, a, about a month uh, before the next release cycle starts, and starts the, then comes in the first. A major phase of the release cycle where we in collect enhancements. So Kubernetes, each release, there are enhancements that are introduced to Kubernetes. There's also enhancements that are graduating from alpha, beta, uh, GA, or being deprecated as well or removed as well, like pod security policies was removed in 1.25. Uh, it was deprecated, I believe, in 1.22. So, uh, so, there, so we start to, we, so we, now we have a process where the 24 different uh, special interest groups of Kubernetes or SIGs. So Kubernetes is broken into all the code and GitHub repositories are broken into 24 different uh, special interest groups. And these 24 different special interest groups opt, opt in into what their, uh, their own enhancements will be ready for the release cycle. So the first part of the release cycle is when uh, the SIGs will opt in uh, uh, enhancements that, we, that will be part of the release, like enhancements uh, that will take features from alpha, alpha to beta, beta to GA. Uh, it, might also, uh, it might also be reinstated as beta as well because they might have changed something, like if they might have changed a, a controller or something like that. Uh, so that's usually the first step. Uh, the first major milestone is the enhancements collection, and we have an, an enhancements freeze as well. And, and with enhancements freeze, that's where all the enhancements wishing to be part of the current of release cycle uh, would have to be what we call an, an implementable state. There is, they have testing plans, they have graduation criteria. So they have to satisfy uh, very uh, cr uh, specific criteria to meet an enhancements freeze. And uh, we'll talk about all the different teams and their roles and, and what they do in the next few slides here. Uh, so next milestone after that uh, is after enhancements freeze is code freeze. Uh, that's where all the enhancements going in, into the release must be code complete, including tests as well. Uh, and the docs pull requesters. So every enhancement in Kubernetes, most of the time they're user facing, so they need some sort of documentation. So for users to, to learn and to know about how to use that enhancement or feature. So around this time, around code freeze, a little bit after code freeze, it's usually a few days, there's usually a, a, doc, a documentation uh, pull request deadline as well, uh, what we call the placeholder PR, meaning that they intend to, uh, to create documentation for that enhancement. It doesn't have to be ready, they just have to have the intent uh, and uh, clear and make some effort into that they, all, they will create some documentation for their, for their enhancement. Uh, next is the test freeze when all, and this date also uh, aligns as well with the, with the branch cut as well. Uh, so along the way, uh, the other teams, we'll talk about what the other teams are in a little bit. They will continue to do their work as well. Enhancements team uh, with code freeze will make sure that uh, all the code PRs emerge. Uh, docs will start pinging folks about uh, to, to make sure that if they do need to if they need to update feature gates, then make sure that the documentation is, it's noted that they need to do those updated docs. Uh, CI team and the bug triage team will, will do, will continue to do their work as well. Next is test freeze. So test freeze co-lines also uh, with the branch cuts as well. So the branch cut, we it will create a release branch just for that release. Uh, here also with test freeze, this is pretty close to the release time already. So the other teams get involved. We start generating, uh, finalizing the release notes. We start to decide what the major themes are 
because once we reach code freeze, we know which enhancements are going to stable, any key enhancements that are going to be removed or deprecated. Uh, they might be part of major themes. Also, some key enhancements might be uh, very big that they might want to write a feature blog about it as well, Kubernetes.io. After that, after the branch cut uh, with test freeze, we do start doing a release candidates as well. Um, so we do release candidates for the last uh, few weeks. Then come actual the actual release dates, uh, where we also do we do code thaw as well, and the release dates as well um, aligns with the, just the finalization of the release cycle. Except for the comms team, we'll talk about that in a little bit, because the feature blogs will will be published after the release. So there's one team that whose work continues on uh, a few weeks after the release. And the release team is made up about 35 to 40 community members. And there's nine roles with the release team. Uh, most roles have four shadows, so there's always a release lead who is to, uh, responsible for the release cycle and release process. Uh, the release, there's also an emeritus advisor. The emeritus advisor is you typically, most of the time, a former release lead or has been on many different release teams. The release lead will have release lead shadows. The release lead shadows will, will also be veteran release team members. They will have, have been, most likely been, have been role leads in the past. Uh, we have a branch manager and a branch manager's shadow. The branch manager uh, does the actual cutting of the branch, does the actual work uh, on, the, on the final release cuts. The, the branch manager's shadow might cut the alpha uh, releases, the beta releases, the RCs as well. <clears throat> and we'll talk about the exact uh, functions of each role, but I'll just briefly highlight there's bug triage, there's CI signal, there's communications, there's uh, docs, uh, there's, uh, there's enhancements, and there's release notes. So we start with first with enhancements. Enhancements um, come active into the release cycle very early. Um, usually we start even before the release cycle has started, um, preparing the K enhancements repo uh, for new enhancements to come in, new features to opt in. So how it works is enhancements team is the team um, responsible for tracking all Kubernetes enhancements proposal that will be uh, opted in into a release cycle. How we do that is um, by opening a KEP issue. KEP stands for Kubernetes enhancements proposal. Um, we open those issues on a repo called Kubernetes slash enhancements. Now, if so if a cap has to be included in, into a release cycle, uh, one of the SIG leads, chair or TL, would, come, would need to go to the cap issue and add a few labels. Um, and usually we have some, um, we have put in some automation now to recognize those labels on the cap issue and dump all of those uh, tracked enhancements on a GitHub project beta board that looks something like this. So here, um, during this enhancements, uh, till the enhancements freeze time, enhancements, uh, shadows and leads would be talking to, uh, reaching out to SIG leads, different SIGs, um, asking them to finish their um, kept issue templates, add all the uh, metadata that are required um, for their proposal. Um, yep, that's all. And these cap issues would be um, uh, helping the community to know which features would be moving from alpha to beta or beta to stable or maybe deprecations. Um, next, we have CI signal. So this team uh, starts to come in once we have the enhancements freeze in place and folks are now working on implementing code for the track enhancements. So. What this team does is we have a tool called Test Grid. Um, CI Signal team tracks all the tests that are running against the new code, or uh, uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes, Kubernetes slash Kubernetes master branch. Um, they track the status of our uh, master blocking and master informing boards and keep giving the community a weekly update 
Um, this signal also helps us to cut various uh, release cuts during the re release cycles, uh, alpha, beta, and RCs, and eventually leading to the actual release cut. Next, we have bug triage. Um, this team is responsible for uh, triaging all issues and pull requests that are targeting the release. Um, they also track any potential issues that might be a release blocker. Um, yep. Next, we have docs or documentation. So like I mentioned before, <clears throat> every new feature or new enhancement or any graduating enhancement uh, needs to have the appropriate documentation <clears throat> ready when on release day. Uh, the docs team also helps generate the reference uh, docs, so they help generate the uh, API docs, the kubeadm docs, and kubecontrol docs as well. They also make sure that the feature gates page is updated as well. <clears throat> and also we have a deprecated API migration page as well that started about a year and a half ago because we're at this maturity level now that we're actually deprecating and removing APIs. Like, 122 removed uh, ingress beta, beta ingress APIs, beta CRDs APIs, pod security policies removed, uh, was removed in 125, et cetera. So now we need to, uh, to, uh, to, to create a place to keep in track of those deprecated APIs uh, in the documentation. <clears throat> Next is comms or communications. Uh, so comms uh, helps create the official release blog. Uh, so the official release blog is published when uh, after the release is cut, <clears throat> after some GitHub branching things are done as well. Uh, so once the release blog is cut, we communicate uh, to uh, to the whole uh, to the whole community uh, through various mailing lists as well that the release is official. Uh, <clears throat> there's also a, a, a theme to each release. So each release actually has a theme, a name since 1.10, I believe. And also has a logo, if you, if you didn't know. Uh, so 123 was the next frontier. It's a take on, on Star Trek. Uh, so there's a lot of Star Trek themes in, um, in Kubernetes. Um, yeah, so, and 127 is the chill release, I believe, or is so. <laughs> so there's always themes for each release since 1.10. Uh, the comms team also helped create the feature blogs. So a lot of new features, or gradient features, a lot of SIGs want folks to use those features and one way is not just the documentation page, but they'll write a blog about it as well. Uh, and also they coordinate uh, webinars about the release and the, the release webinar will, will, will do an overview on the enhancements that are part of the release. We'll also uh, coordinate interviews and press releases as well. Uh, and usually the interviews are, are done by the release lead. And uh, there's release notes. Uh, release notes help generate and edit the release notes. So there is a tool called Corel that helps with to release Kubernetes. Um, so there's a sub command uh, for for Corel to generate release notes. And uh, and the the release the release notes team actually created that tool itself. And I was part of that team in 1.18. I was a release note shadow, and the, my fellow release note shadows uh, actually created this tool in Corel to actually scrape and create the release notes. Um, and some of the teams afterwards helped to iterate on that tool uh, to, to scrape uh, all the PRs to create the release notes. Uh, so it's not just, you know, it's not just <clears throat> there. So there's various levels of work that, that can be done on, on a release team. Like docs, I didn't mention before, tends to be more of, of a Git uh, heavy uh, role as well because there's a lot of uh, get there's all there's lots of git syncs so it's lots of uh, merge there's a few there's always merge conflicts that have to be fixed so it's it's not so there's kind of a uh, each role kind of has a has their own like traits that uh, it does not it's, it's not as obvious as one might think so like docs uh, you know it'll be helpful you don't need to you don't need to have get experience but it'll be helpful to have that get experience. Uh, release notes since uh, you are using uh, a Go program, it probably will be helpful. We do have documentation as well, but if you want help iterate on the tool, you know you would need a little Golang uh, experience. We don't need to as well, uh, as well. Like you can just use the tool as is. So there's various levels where, where folks can, can help uh, within the release team efforts.
and then we finally have uh, the branch management. Um, so we have a role called branch manager and they also have shadows uh, who actually help us cut the release, different release cuts and actually the, uh, the final cut as well. So this is a diagram for how actually cutting any uh, release cut looks like. So we start with a tracking issue. Um, one of the branch manager or somebody who is uh, responsible for cut, cutting uh, the release in the moment um, starts with a, creating an issue on uh, Kubernetes slash SIG release repo. And issue looks something like the first picture. After that, they also put the same notifications on uh, different Slack channels we use on uh, slack.ktest.io. So our uh, release process is divided into two parts. We start with a mock uh, release cut, uh, which is also two parts. We start with mock stage, and then we do a mock run. And if everything goes well in mock stage, mock phase, we move to, move to our no mock run. Um, so meanwhile, when we are running our mock stage and mock run, we would be tracking all or logging all our progress whether something is green, something failed, uh, what version of tools we are using at that moment, uh, everything, all information will be logged in our um, tracking issue. Once we have a green uh, mock stage and mock run, we'll move to no mock run. And um, that's, uh, um, that is followed by promoting images. What promoting images means here is um, whatever, whatever uh, container images, whatever artifacts we have crea created during our no mock stage run would be moved to production buckets, and then we'll have our, fine, uh, our no mock run step. After that, once we have our uh, no mock steps also green and running successful, uh, we would be needing uh, help from one of the Googlers uh, because right now, currently, as of uh, this talk, um, our tooling for building RPMs and dev packages is uh, under Google infrastructure. So uh, the release branch uh, manager or shadows, they coordinate with one of the Google people and uh, move the responsibility to them for the RPM and dev packages. And once everything is done, um, same is again logged on our tracking issue and, and an announcement is sent to the dev mailing list to the community. I do want to make a note, but there is work <clears throat> to remove the um, reliance on a Googler yep. to, for the dev and RPM packages. So uh, where we've done tests on using uh, open uh, build system or, or OBS uh, to build the dev and RPM packages. So that is some work that is being done. Uh, that was done last year, we'll continue to do this year as well. So lastly, we have uh, the upcoming uh, release cycle for 1.28. Uh, so the shadow application program is, a, is actually open until May 2nd. Uh, there's a QR code to apply, uh, and folks are notified by May 9th. The official start date for the release cycle is, is May 15th. Uh, the planned release date for 1.28 is August 15th. Uh, Grace, Grace Wen is a, is a release team lead for 1.28. Uh, Leo uh, Pake is the Emeritus Advisor for 128. Uh, Leo was the release lead, I believe, for 126. Uh, anyway, so that's all for our talk. Um, I want to thank you very much for attending on a KubeCon Friday afternoon. Uh, here, this is the QR code for our talk for any feedback. And any questions? Yeah, there's mics, um, there's microphones on the sides here if you have any questions. Um, hello, Th thank you for the talk. I'm just asking about uh, what are the requirements to apply for the shadow program and uh, um, the working hours, uh, all, all the, this kind of detail. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, so you, there's no requirements at all. Uh, you, uh, you don't need any experience with Git, you don't need any programming experience, you don't need Kubernetes experience at all. Uh, so that's the beauty about the shadow program. You can come in totally new. Uh, we have uh, 
uh, playbooks or run books to help guide folks on each role, or we call them handbooks, handbooks for each role as well. And if you need help, we are very friendly to show folks as well. Like I always do sessions on 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 how to do uh, on how to do on how to sync branches for the docs team, how to do merge conflicts. I actually have YouTube videos on how to on how to fix merge conflicts uh, for the K website uh, re repository. So you don't need any experience at all. Uh, I think the only thing you need is just a GitHub. You don't even need a GitHub profile yet, I guess, but maybe that's, but I don't think you need, there's no other requirement except for an email address. Just to add, um, if, if uh, you are looking for what is expected out of different roles, uh, more on what we discussed, uh, we have role handbooks, um, which you would find in um, github.com slash kubernetes slash sig release. Um, you would find dedicated handbooks for each of the roles that we discussed here, and also that would help you to get that uh, answer the time expectations questions. Uh, usually shadows are expected to work around maybe two or three hours or two to five hours a week, and not really expected to work during the working days. They can work during weekends, but it vary from role to role as well and also w what part of the release cycle you are in. So uh, there is more information for about that on on our GitHub repo, yeah. Yeah, uh, I just have seen that this is a very long running big uh, process on the release, of course, because very complex. And what do you do if you have a serious issue after code freeze during testing where you see, ah, maybe we should not roll this out? Do you pause then and fix, or what do you do? Different situations. Uh, they could be, we've had PRs reverted before. Uh, we've also have had to uh, put, uh, cherry pick in changes as well. We've also had to cut in, for 123, we had to cut an extra RC. We had to do a fix for 123 was released on Tuesday, the Friday before, there was a, re a regression. We had a PR to fix it. We had to create a, a new RC, but yeah, on Friday nights. Uh, so yeah, so we, we did try to fix it. And um, you know, and we do delay as well. We, d we have delayed, 118 was delayed a few days uh, for an issue. 119 was delayed months. 124 was, four was delayed three weeks so yeah so we do all, all of it <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah good thank you yeah. welcome <laughs> all right any other questions if not thank you very much for coming have a wonderful kubecon rest of kubecon